New and cringe-worthy videos emerge of Democrats snubbing President Biden at his own White House event, flocking instead to his former boss in what is just another sign of the president's deep unpopularity ahead of the midterms. This is Outnumbered. Hello, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno, here with my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany. Also joining us today, Kennedy and Brett Baer. So yesterday, President Biden hosted a health care event at the White House featuring former President Barack Obama. Now, unfortunately, he looked a lot like that totally unpopular kid in high school who just hosts a party and then spends the bulk of it alone as he tries to get someone or even anyone to talk to him. Watch. <laughs> The music, I think, just was the icing on the cake. I mean, this is, honestly, it's hard to watch. The cool guy in the room was former President Obama. And as everyone crowded around him, President Biden tries to get in on the conversation you can see here. But everyone involved, including his own Vice President Kamala Harris, they just seem to ignore him, right? The former president looking like he's blowing him off. And you might say the whole awkward tone was set at the beginning at the event with this joke. Watch. President Biden, Vice President. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> that was all set up. Oh, Brett Baer, it's a new definition of cringeworthy. It's not something that you would think that the uh, White House press staff facing low approval ratings across the board would want to set up. Uh, it's sort of like the cool guy coming back and kind of rubbing it in the face of the other guy. I, listen, it may not have, you know, they may have been trying to just be light and joking about things, but you're right. The video right there is not a good look for President Biden in a time when he's trying to rally the base seven months out of a midterm and trying to figure out what the story is. President Obama, former President Obama, was asked, you know, how does he look towards the midterms? He said, we have a story to tell. Unfortunately for them, the story is very complicated, does not fit on a bumper sticker, and is not getting a lot of approval. That's right. And yet Kennedy, former President Obama, did try to reduce it to a sort of bumper sticker when he was asked about what would the message be for Democrats that are concerned about the upcoming midterms. Let's take a watch. Mr. President, what do you say to Democrats worried about the midterms? What do you tell Democrats worried about the midterms? We've got a story to tell. We've got to tell. So he says, we got a story to tell. We just got to tell it. What story is it? I mean, is it one of historic inflation and skyrocketing crime and gas prices and the plummeting value of the dollar, border security being porous? Because that's what all Americans care about, Kennedy. Uh, you, you bring up a good point about border security. It's April. You know, when we get into May is when we really start seeing uh, the surge of people from Central America trying desperately to get into this country. We haven't seen those numbers yet because right now we're still battling high gas prices. Harris and David Asman just did a brilliant job of breaking that mm -hmm. subject down. Uh, we've got, you know, 40 year high record inflation. Uh, we're on the brink of the Third World War and all of these things not voting well for the president in the polls. So I don't understand what they were thinking. Uh, bringing someone back who is, you know, an iconic and popular figure in the Democrat Party who just makes everyone in the room cry, mm -hmm. uh, longing for the days when they felt like the president was cool. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're all suffering from buyer's remorse. And even the vice president, who's desperately trying to distance herself from this administration that she is also carrying down like an anvil, uh, she's doing her best to stand as close to the former president as she can. Uh, yes. So she comes off cool by loose association. But Kaylee, I mean, frankly, I just mm. thought she looked like another adoring fangirl. I mean, I didn't see it as an association that benefited her in any way. She just looked like one more fan in the crowd. Biden seems to have been discarded, forgotten, frankly, by the media. And remember, after he was elected, after they didn't want him running in the first place, resigned themselves to the fact that he was the best of what's around, to quote Dave Matthews, they were frankly sycophantic in their coverage of him. But now the tables have turned. And is it any wonder why? 
Yeah, I mean, look, watching Joe Biden, the president, walk through the East Room, it's as almost as if you should replace God Bless America with the song All By Myself, which I believe many people <laughs> did on social media. Um, it was sad to watch. I'd be sad for him if this man wasn't destroying our country, in my view. And I think it comes down to this. You know, Emily, presidents have different policies. Of course, Obama very different than Trump. But every president, I would argue, in modern history has the it factor and X factor. You go back to Bill Clinton. People who have met President Clinton say when you're in the room with, room with him one-on-one, -on -one, it's as if no one else is there. He has this effect. President George W. Bush, down to earth. President Obama, like him or not, he does have some rock star effect to him. And my former boss, President Trump, I, I watched him interact with constituents, with people at rallies. He's magnetic, he's charming, he's engaging. And then President Biden was this person who, in his national coming out, yes, we've known him for decades, but when he was the candidate, this was his national coming out. He was sequestered in a basement, and people got to make him whatever they wanted to make him. He was the acceptable alternative. And when you watch him meandering around the East Room, you just have to wonder what he's like on the world stage in some of these high-stakes meetings like the G7. Um, it's really sad. I'm sad for our country. I don't think this is the leadership we deserve. And he lacks sorely the qualities that every president before him in the last four decades has had. And I wonder, Harris, with such a stark uh, contrast, from this event if now this will be the point of no return. I think we frankly had reached it sooner, but I wonder now if the media, when they see themselves, you know, again, going back to 2019, when, when talking heads at ABC, CNN, MSNBC said, don't run, please don't run. Then he did all of a sudden the adults back in the room, right? Then it was sort of this echoing chorus and now such a frank disappointment. And then when the exalted former leader walks in the room and it's like, oh my gosh, the breath of fresh air we've been missing, the charisma, the leadership, the anything, perhaps now will we see an even more fast, more rigid plummet than we already have. Well, I don't want to give the former president that much credit. And I, I certainly don't want to give the media enough credit to, to toggle to something that isn't real for them, right? He, he's not going to be part of the White House, Barack Obama. He, he barely helped Biden when he was running. He, had, he got in late in the summer. I mean, th these two may wear friendship bracelets on Instagram, but I don't think they were made much before the picture was taken. So, no, I, I don't think it's going to happen like that. I think Biden's going to continue to feed the gaffe machine. I think mm -hmm. that, you know, and the press is always there for that. I mean, they, they may want to be sycophants, but, but they like a, a good laugh. They like a good party. They also apparently are drawn to whatever it is that is palace intrigue that has them all jumping off the ships of staffs and so on and so forth. And I don't want to overplay that too much because I realize that every administration, every White House loses people uh, on their staffing. But what's happening with Kamala Harris in particular uh, is something that they will, that they will continue to at least lean in on, especially when you have people like Simone Sanders leaving. When you, your national security advisor leaving Kamala Harris. And you potentially may see some of that coming up with the president. There's going to be some shift when Jen Psaki leaves. My big thing was something that you sort of hinted at, uh, Kaylee, and it is your strong suit. It's your expertise. What is going on with his comms department? I mean, Brett, you and I were at the National Press Club just a few months ago on the red carpet with the former deputy or with the current deputy press secretary. Right? I mean, they, they have a press team. They're there. We know that they're working and doing their jobs. But my goodness, who lets the president wander around the room like Waldo? No, no, no. I mean, this was really bad. I, I don't think I said it well enough at the beginning. It was heinous. Uh, and the image of that is just getting picked up and on social media and elsewhere. In this environment, that you cannot happen. That cannot happen. And I think, Harris, you're right to point out that the, the magic of former President Obama is within Democratic circles. Remember, he campaigned with Terry McAuliffe a lot to yeah. try to get him across the finish line in Virginia. He campaigned extensively with Stacey Abrams. Mm -hmm. President Obama did. And um, so I don't know how much this is going to, you know, help Joe Biden. In fact, yesterday did not help right. President Biden. I think that's right. And that was the point that I was making, that within the Democrat circle, there seems to be an adulation and an adoration for the prior leader. And it seemed that they really mustered up that same uh, false adoration or fleeting adoration for President Biden. I think he's sorely disappointed most Americans, mm -hmm. but frankly, his own party. And to Tucker's point from last night, they are quite happy to eat their own. The question is just who's next that they can put in the spotlight. And that remains the question.